أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بلا بردرز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين all praise and worship be unto Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Creator the Sustainer أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ويتستفاد that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we send our love and greetings salutations to beloved Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his pious and his pure family to his companions and all those who follow his sunnah until the end of time may Allah bless us to be amongst them آمين والحمد لله الحمد لله at the end of a battle one of the battles in Islam the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Sahaba were coming home on their way to Medina and the Sahaba were humans and like all humans they quarrel and they can have disagreements. And it so happened that a you know a young man from the Ansar, the Ansar of course, the people of Medina, and a young man from the Muhajirin, the people of Makkah, they got into an argument. And while this you know tension started to heat up, the Ansar he called, "Oh Ansar, oh people of Ansar, come and help me." And the other one, the other uh, Muslim from Makkah, he said, "Oh Muhajirin, come and help me and support me." And it became a bit of a tense moment between the two the two camps, and they were using. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the term al-muhajireen wal-ansar in beautiful, um, praiseworthy manner. To be of the ansar and to be of the muhajireen is a title which Allah praises the sahaba of. To be of a category, on the on qiyamah, Allah mentions that of the best people that ever walked the face of the earth are the ansar and the muhajireen. But then the Nabi Sallam comes out and he hears this and he basically says, I'm still with you and you're using titles of jahiliyyah. You're using titles of ignorance. Why? How? This is a title that Allah uses in the Quran. There's a title which Allah praises the Sahaba with. What the Nabi is saying, you use this title, which is a beautiful title, but to cause disunity amongst yourselves. It was now a title to say, we are better than you. There's a them and us. My identity versus your identity. You've taken something which Allah had given as a beautiful symbol of making you stand out in a good way, but you use it to belittle and demean someone else. In another hadith, the Nabi says, of the things that will remain in my ummah, meaning amongst the Muslims, until the day of Jahiliyyah, until the day of Qiyamah, of the things of Jahiliyyah that will remain, is that people will be boastful and proud and arrogant about their forefathers, and they will belittle the ancestry of another group of people. May Opa and May was so great, and you, you people are so backwards. Yet it is part of our deen to honor your lineage and your ancestry, and to honor your identity and your culture. In fact, Allah says that min ayati of the signs of Allah that He created the heavens and the earth, waqtilaf al sinatikum wa alwanikum. That of the signs that there is in Allah, He created you in different shapes and sizes and colors and cultures and languages. Inna fi dalika la ayat lil alamin. And in this is a sign of Allah. Allah says of the great miracles of Allah is He created you in different forms. The angels, for example, come in one shape, one mode. But humans come in different styles. So how do we celebrate and understand this diversity and our identity? In this month, we will know that we'll talk about culture and heritage, race, nationality. All these things are components of who you are and what you identify with. When someone asks you, tell us about yourself. Where do you start? Where do you start? And sometimes, for, and all of these things are part of your, what makes you, you. You are a male or female, and really those are the only two options you have. You don't have another option besides that. You are of a certain age, which tells you which generation you were born in. You, you, know, you, you come from a certain ethnic background. This is a reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't deny ethnicity. We don't say that we are colorblind and there's no such thing. Yes, there are black people and white people, alhamdulillah, without anyone being superior to the other. You have your language. And you have, and many times when we ask you to tell us about yourselves, subhanallah, we live in an age where the first thing you mention is, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer. You, I, your identity is based on your profession. Your identity is based on what you do. And furthermore, you identify with the groups that you participate. I see like a Springbok jersey there. You want the world to know where I stand. Sometimes one identity figure clashes with another one. Your passport says you're South African, but your jersey says you're a New Zealander. And we're confused. We don't know which side of the fence you're on. So all these different identity markers and figures is what makes you, you. But ultimately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you and me one title. Allah gave us one description to describe who you are. And the hi highest level of description is 
Allah says, Was I, I named you. Allah says in the Quran, and I am the one that named you Muslims. I named you Muslims. This Ummah and all the previous nations before that were pious, and not only them, the angels, and everything in creation that obeys Allah is a Muslim. A Muslim is that ultimate, your core identity. If someone asks you, tell me about yourself, very first thing, I'm a Muslim. And what does it mean to be a Muslim? What does it mean to be a Muslim? A Muslim, as we know the title, it is one who submits and surrenders to his creator. That what defines me, you can change my nationality. I can be born in South Africa, but I can migrate to another country. You know, after a while, eventually, even the most diehard Manchester fan will eventually say, look, I become Murtad of a Manchester fan, I'm going to join another team. You know, you can leave your, your, your sports team. You can even, subhanAllah, in today's day and age, you can change your gender. It's obviously not permissible, but it's possible. But the one thing that never changes, the one thing that stays with you, is that you are a Muslim. And the one thing that should define you and me in every single situation that should not conflict, there should be no conflict between your other, your other factors of your life, is that your identity as a Muslim. Even as we know, our forefathers, our parents can come and go. We are a father, may Allah protect, we are a father, we identify, I'm a dad today. T tomorrow I d something could happen, I'm no longer a father. It's possible. Your marital status, I think I'm married, tomorrow something could happen and you're not married anymore. But the one constant in your life, in my life, is going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what should define us as a Muslim. And that's why Allah says, Inna deena inda Allah al-Islam. That the deen for Allah, the only one that he accepts is that of Islam. Islam, when we say the word deen, it's not a religion. Deen means a lifestyle. It means the choices that you make. It means every decision that you make. It is not just what you do in the masjid. It's not something that you put on pause. Deen is not something which has a time and a place, and then you put it to one side, and then you switch over. No. Deen permeates everything. I'm a Muslim when I'm in the masjid. I'm a Muslim when I'm standing you know, in the queue at the shop. There's an adab, and etiquette. I'm a Muslim at work. Things I can do, I can't do. When I go shopping, I look for the halal queue. I'm a Muslim. What I wear, what I don't wear, who I associate with, everything I do is connected to being a Muslim. And subhanAllah, if you think about you know, identity and culture, and we come from a society where, how stupid, how stupid were people where they divided people based on color. Of the most silly things you could divide someone on is based on color. Something which you have no control over. Something which is meaningless, that you stand too much in the sun, then your color changes. Whereas what makes sense from a heritage perspective, if you divide a group of people based on what their beliefs, their models, their ethics, their choices, and that's what, based on their deen, that is what really differentiates in the sight of Allah. Allah doesn't see boundaries and borders. Allah doesn't see nationality and all those things. These things change. But the thing that does not change is your deen. So if I want to be a Muslim, if I call myself a Muslim, I've joined, I've ticked the box, I'm a Muslim. What does it mean to be a Muslim? Oh, it's a deepish kind of question. What do I have to do to be a Muslim? You know, there's a big debate going on in France at the moment where the abaya has become uh, um, outlawed. Girls, you know, that goes to school, they're not allowed to wear an abaya. And it's, subhanAllah, it's, it's so strange that a country will tell a secular modern cult country will tell young girls, you're not allowed to wear a certain dress because it's not revealing enough. It doesn't show your curves enough. You need to take, it, you need to take this away. And of course, there's a counter debate and say, but the abaya, is the abaya an Islamic thing or a cultural thing? Ultimately, ultimately, your identity as a Muslim goes beyond the clothing that you wear. It's the choices that you make. And so what are the key fundamentals? If I take a Muslim, and you'll find Muslims wearing different clothes, eating different cuisines, some Muslims doing haram, some Muslims are better than others. But what are the fundamental things that I cannot take away? If I take that away, I'm no longer Muslim. What are the key ingredients to a Muslim? Well, the number one thing, one of the, the number one thing, the Nabi Sun says, the line that distinguishes us, a Muslim from a non-Muslim, the one dividing line between Muslims and non-Muslims is what? Salah. A person that does not make salah is not a Muslim. The number one thing that makes you a Muslim, that part of the club, the most important criteria that you need to fulfill 
is salah. The Prophet says the line between the covenant that distinguishes between Muslims and non-Muslims is salah. So whoever leaves it has left Islam. Has left Islam. And that is why if you're going to prioritize anything in your life, if you're going to do anything that you're going to focus on, if any area of your life is, is, is not right, this is the number one area to look at. The quality and the nature of our salah. In other hadith, the Nabi says that the one characteristic that should stand out of my ummah. He says, if, the Nabi says, every ummah, every nation before us had a special quality. Maybe it was courage. Maybe it was generosity. Something good about that ummah. When people looked at them, they will say, those are people who are very honest. Those are very kind people. And for those of you who have traveled the world, you can almost generalize. It's not good to generalize, but something you can generalize. You know, the people of Bukab, they're very like this. The people of Durban are very like that. The Nabi says, the quality that should stand out from my ummah is a quality of modesty. Modesty means a sense of decorum, a sense of how you treat people, a sense of how you engage, the, the, the way you present yourself. And subhanAllah, this is the one characteristic that is consciously being removed across the world. When people see a Muslim, when you and when your colleagues engage with you, interact with you or me, they should know we don't swear in front of Ahmed. We don't, we don't drink. And, you know, you, you, know you, you understand this. You know when sometimes people are joking and laughing and they're going a bit uh, uh, out of hand. And someone, you know, maybe the priest or the imam or someone or an elder person comes and they kind of put it to one side. You have a sense of decorum because this person is a person of modesty. The Nabi says a Muslim must have that quality. That people should know. We don't talk like this in front of Ahmad and Fatima, not because they are superior or they are holier than thou, but because these kind of things they don't associate with. And people know, whether you're Muslim or not Muslim, you know what is something praiseworthy and something which is not something, uh, 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 an activity which is not good, something you wouldn't want to engage in. As a Muslim, we should be the furthest away from such kind of open vulgarity, open speech that is ugly. That is the Nabi, the Nabi is saying, this is the quality I want for my ummah. A quality of modesty, of decorum, of, of good etiquette, uh, etiquette and akhlaq. This is what it means to be a Muslim. In another hadith, the Nabi so we're speaking about a number of essential qualities that make you a Muslim. Number one, we said salah. Number two, uh, uh, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you engage, the jokes you share, the things you watch is one that is modest and model. In another hadith, the Nabi says, a Muslim is someone whose tongue and hand the people are safe. A Muslim, listen very carefully, a Muslim is somebody that the people know they can feel safe, that you won't speak badly about them, you won't insult them, and you won't physically harm them, you won't damage their property. Meaning, people should feel safe that if I'm in a Muslim neighborhood, or I'm passing by and I'm alone and there's a bunch of Muslims around me, I feel safe, I feel good. Even if I'm a non-Muslim, I feel good that these guys, Muslims don't hurt people. Muslims don't rob. Muslims don't cheat people. It should be known. And there was a time, subhanAllah, when people did think that way. People did think that way. If I let a, a Muslim guy come to my house and fix my plumbing, I don't have to worry that he's going to harm my wife or he's going to steal or do a bad job just because he's a Muslim. So the Nabi says, a Muslim is some, if you want to ask yourself, am I a Muslim? Am I genuinely a true Muslim? Ask yourself, do people fear that I will abuse them with my tongue verbally or with my hand? And he says, that, and a believer, a true believer is the one who is trusted with the lives and wealth of the people. A person of a, even a higher caliber, people actively, they look to you to, be, to keep their money and their well-being safe. They come to you for security. And this is a, remember the hadith doesn't say, he doesn't harm other Muslims. He doesn't harm any person. How you treat your fellow man, that defines you as who you are. You cannot say, and subhanAllah, I get this many times, you know, you have these conversations where people who, you know, mashallah, they, they grew up in, in uh, um, you know, they grew up a certain lifestyle. They were Muslim, maybe ritualistically, they're not Muslim. They don't make salah, they don't recite Quran. But they'll say, we're good people, we, we help one another, and we, we, you know, we feed the penguins, and we look after the environment, and you know, we love humanity. That's good for enough. And they'll say many times, but you know what? I can't bring myself to accept that same Buddha that is whole day in the masjid, five times, five times in the masjid, he is the most grumpy, angry, rude, bad-mannered person. So I can't reconcile my Islam with that. 
And the reality, you need both. You can't have, you can't have good models and you've ne neglected Allah. You don't make salah. That's not a Muslim. And you can't be five times a day in the masjid, waking up for tahajjud, fasting, but then you're swearing your neighbors and you backbiting this one and you're cheating that one. That is also not a Muslim. How you treat the, how you engage with your creator and how you treat the creation is what makes you a Muslim. The Nabi is telling us. As the Nabi says, the Prophet he, he swears, he says, by Allah, I swear, you are not, you do not have true iman. And he said, and the Sahaba said, who is this person who does not have true iman? He said, the one whose neighbor, the people that lives around him, don't feel safe from his home. He abuses his neighbors. His neighbors don't like him. His neighbors feel annoyed with him. He parks in front of their house. He plays whatever he's playing, whether it is kiraat, whether he's playing, mashallah, bayan, making dhikr, but it disturbs the neighbors. Such a person, there's something wrong with his iman. If your neighbors can't get along with you because of your harm, then there's something wrong with your iman. The Nabi says, then you are not a true Muslim. And another hadith, the Nabi says, you are not a true Muslim if your stomach is filled and the people around you are hungry. Your neighbors don't have enough to eat. So they're very scary for us. Very, very scary. And so, in describing and defining what it means to be a Muslim, we should remember that ultimately, these ethics and these criteria these, this is what symbolizes us. Now, subhanAllah, I want you to think about symbolism. As I said, mashallah, we have many brothers who proudly wear their green jerseys or their, you know, black jerseys. They want to stand up as a badge of honor. This is what I stand for. Now, look how beautifully this religion is. When you want to stand up as a badge of honor, what does Islam mean? When someone ticks a box, I'm a Muslim. What automatically should come through is, what do I know about a Muslim? I know a Muslim. This guy, they pray. They, tell, they don't tell lies, they're honest, they're modest, they don't harm people. That is your badge of honor as a Muslim. That is what symbolizes us as people. And if we are not on that path, then we're very far from wearing the jersey of Islam, if you so to speak. You're very far from waving the flag of Islam when, you don't, when we don't inculcate these things in our lives. The Nabi says the most complete believer in faith are those who have the best of akhlaq, the best character. They are soft in nature. You, we live in a time where it's almost weak, it's almost uh, uh, disliked to be soft-natured. But this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. The Nabi says, the best of you is the one with the nicest akhlaq, the soft, softness in nature. He is friendly to others and, uh, and he is befriended and people seek him as a friend. He is not one of us who is not friendly or people resent. Meaning, you're not part of the camp, you're not part of the club. You're not part of the team. You, don't, you should not wear our jersey. We almost say to you, Buddha, take that Islam jersey off. You're not from us if you are a, a human being that is nasty and rude to others. You are an embarrassment to the Ummah. You are an embarrassment to the Ummah. So each and every one of us, we carry with us our identity as Muslims. And every action, every engagement, every conversation, every email we send, every argument we get into, every traffic light we stand, our Islam is what is shown off first and foremost, especially as a minority. Our Islam is what defines us and what people look at. Alhamdulillah, uh, as you know, I wasn't here. I don't know if you noticed, for the last two weeks, you know, I wasn't here. And I traveled to a very tiny country called Gambia. Not Zambia, Gambia. It's in, it's like, it's, I think it's the smallest country in, on mainland Africa. And you know, when you go to these different parts of the world, many times you can't engage, you can't even speak the language. But when you, in, when you get to, and you're in touch with people that are Muslims, what's beautiful is how the uniformity. You just have to say, make the gesture of salah and direction, he knows, ah, oh, you're looking for the qibla. Qibla is this way. You wanna know halal, where to eat? Ah, oh, that's the restaurant for halal. Whatever country you come from, whatever language they speak, there are certain things that every single Muslim community holds true. And that's why the Nabi says, whoever prays like us, they make salah. And they face our qibla. And they eat our halal food. They eat halal food. Is a Muslim. And he's under Allah and the protection, the protection of Allah and the protection of the Nabi Sallam. So do not betray Allah by betraying those who are under his protection. This hadith is a Bukhari, beautiful. We conclude with this hadith. No matter 
how weak you are as a Muslim, or how weak someone is as a Muslim, or how sinful that person is as a Muslim. We spoke about all the things you need to do as a Muslim. But if you don't do those things, and he identifies, he ticks the box as a Muslim, it does not give me or anyone the right to take away that title. That title of Islam is between you and Allah. And if you have identified as a Muslim, irrespective of what you're doing, it is only for Allah to remove it. And the Nabi Sallam has made a very, very simple criteria. If the man makes salah, and he faces the qibla, and he eats the halal food, and he identifies as a Muslim, he outwardly identifies as a Muslim, maybe she's not wearing the hijab, maybe she's not wearing anything, maybe he's in a relationship with haram, maybe he's doing all kinds of bad transactions, he's on drugs. But if he identifies as a Muslim, and he ascribes to these very, very basics, then we don't have any right to kick him out of the club. The club belongs to Allah. The club belongs to Allah. You cannot take that jersey off someone and say, you're not part of the team. That belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also, it's also to remember that there's a, we aspire, we aspire to the highest levels of being a Muslim and identify as, as, as Muslims. And we are an ambassador for our deen, for our Quran, for our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we ask Allah in this, you know, in, in this month of heritage, when everyone is searching for their ancestry and their lineage, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Islam our defining title. May Allah grant us to live by the code and the ethics of Islam. May it be our deen, may it be our identity in the dunya, so it may be our identity in the akhirah. That's the only thing that's going to matter. Who is a Muslim? May Allah makes us amongst them. Ameen. Ameen. Khair. Just a few quick announcements. Um, this sat Sunday, the 17th of September, um, we will be having an Umrah course so anyone inshallah would like to attend please and it's got a we've limited uh, seats available but if you'd like to attend you can please uh, contact the office um, and inshallah would love to have you this sunday morning um, the 17th of september then a uh, breakfast fundraiser for our Bur uh, for our uh, buranul bilals on their trip to pe so inshallah that is um, that happened saturday 9th of september that happened already Oh, last week. I wasn't here. I didn't know. I wasn't invited. Um, we, we say shukran for, for, for the support. Um, I didn't get any barakat, but alhamdulillah. So we say jazakallah khair for the support. And uh, um, we wish the Bilal a safe trip, inshallah, to Port Elizabeth. And then we've got an ima amazing race. Get ready for the ultimate adventure. Amazing race. There is a Book Up Heritage Edition. That is next week, Sunday, the 24th. Um, so I think there's a, uh, you go around the Book Up and you look and find clues and all these things. So inshallah, um, if you would like to participate in this, then you can you can let us know. And then there's the Cape, Cape Malay Heritage Revival Experience. But it's open, I'm sure, to everyone, even if you're not Cape Malay. But uh, inshallah, that's also the 24th of September next week at the the Bukab uh, Cultural Hub, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.